from the bottom. From the bottom. You know we got them. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's your boy Cal with a special guest. I guess he's not a special guest. He's just a regular guest who always get put to the test. What's going what? on, everybody? Y'all it's probably, been a minute, man. Yeah, he probably still don't know who you are. I know. But uh, we got Boo in the house. What's up? What's up? You know, we we going to, you know, working to try to be more consistent. You know, trying to get the grind back. And uh, I got to tell Boo, thank you for helping us, you know. To make sure we put out an episode. Man, appreciate you for having me, man. I've been, I've been missing y'all, man. What, what you been up to? Man, work, man. Work and more work. What about you? Oh, man. You know, y'all know what I'm still on. You know, I'm still trying to get it one day at a time. You know, with the business. You know, everything moving. Shout out to Al. Shout out to N.O. Jerry. You know, Jerry couldn't be here at this time. Did you tell him about the, you tell him the good news? No, not yet. Not okay, yet. well, we'll, we'll next, get to that. Next we'll get episode, to that. <laughs> next episode, I'll let y'all know, you know, your boy, your boy out here moving, you know, and I got to say, having a podcast kind of helped with the marketing and social media part a lot, you know, it keep me focused and, you know, I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> that's all I, I hear that, say. man, making moves. But uh, shout out to everybody who liked the, um. The 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 company that I have is called Pops with Mops Cleaning. It's a janitorial business located up here in the greater Seattle area, Tacoma area, you know. So if you know anybody with a small business or commercial who's looking for some cleaning, you know, holla at your boys. You know, we do everything on this way. We ain't trying to break you. We ain't trying to break the bank. You know, we just trying to be a solution to your headache. I like that. That was deep. That was good. Hey, did that you, was you just, oh, man. Freestyle talking <laughs> that one. That was freestyle I sure was looking like, is he reading or something? But, uh, you know, we're going to go on and jump into this episode. And uh, the first topic we have is life is short. Definitely. Uh, the reason I came up with that is because I recently lost a classmate, uh, R.I.P. Tutu. And... You know, you never think that at such a young age you'll be losing classmates, you know, at our age and even younger, you know, like friends you grew up with. But it just lets you know that, you know, you can't take life for granted because, like I say, one one minute you're here, the next minute you're gone. And it just make you really value life, you know, waking up, I mean... Yeah, we got electronics, but I got to say, I think everybody should really take time out their day to, you know, look at the birds and the bees, you know, the trees, and just sit back and look at the sky. Well, I don't know if they should look at the birds and the bees. Uh, yeah, that's not like, that's not like another talk yeah, right yeah, there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, no. well, what I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, if you want to go enjoy life, just go enjoy, go enjoy life, because life is too short to be stressing all the time and be mad for no reason. Yeah. You know, what, 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 you want, what you want to say? No, I agree, I agree with everything you said, man. It's I think a lot of times, man, we we do take it for granted. It's, it's one of them things, like, you never, you you know, you always put things off. Oh, I got time for that. And, I mean, especially, you know, with family and friends, I think you should definitely, you know, cherish them while they're here, while you're here, I should say. Because a lot of times, man, we, we'll push things off. You know, you think you got time for that. I'll, I'll go see them later, you know. And so that's that's kind of the tough. That's tough, man. Yeah. So, you know what I say is try to live a stress free life. I mean, y'all know who bringing the stress to you. You know who you don't like to be around because of this, because of that. Just, you know, if you wanna, if you really wanna start something, just go start it. Yeah. You know, you learn as you go, but you not starting is even worse. You like, know, people ain't going to like everything you do. They ain't going to like every move you make. But on the other hand, some people would really like what you're doing. You'll be an inspiration to other people, you know, by showing them that they can do it because you can do it. I look at you and I notice, like, 
you seem to be real stress free. If you, I mean, or you got a good way of you know hiding it. <laughs> so, like for you, because you somebody I look up to. What are some things you do to like relieve stress, or you know, to kind of have that that better outlook on life? Uh, I don't know. I just be, I just be happy to wake up in the morning. Yeah. And I realized that, you know, I never expected to be where I am today. Just being grateful. Yeah. So I'm grateful for everything I have, you know, from my family to my friends to all that stuff. And I just, I don't know. I guess it depends on what you value. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, because you can always have it worse. Like, a I, lot could be, worse. <laughs> I could be homeless. I could be in jail. You know, in a in a cell. You yeah. know, and stuff like that. And you realize that stuff is not as stressful as people like to make it seem. Yeah. You know, like your car break down. I mean, what you gonna do? Like, you can sit here and stress about it. Or you can try to figure out how to fix it yourself, University of YouTube, or call up somebody, a mechanic, <laughs> or you can either, you know, you just strap your boots up and hop on the bus and public transportation till you get your money back up Yeah. to, you know, be able to fix your car or something. Yeah. That's why I always tell people you should have an emergency fund set away for, you know, because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, and make sure you have life insurance. So just in case, <laughs> just in case something do happen, your family will be straight. You yeah. know when you leave. Yeah. So you know, I just try to be straight. Uh, I don't know. I mean, basketball is my stress reliever. I think everybody should have some type of stress reliever. Yeah. Whether it be video game, you playing sports, you going hiking, you I would say gambling, but gambling get kind of stressful once you lose yeah. so much money. <laughs> Unless you do it on GTA. Then, no, I'll be you know, getting stressed you, out on that too. Well, you know, but you ain't really losing no money. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So, yeah, you know. Go hit a quick lick real quick. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, I just try to be stress free and just enjoy life. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things you said was just being grateful with what you got. I think a lot of times we, you know, we always looking at what the next person got. You know, even though you, you know, you living great. You could be living great, have everything you need, but you know you see your neighbor got a you know a new car or something. You you want that? I think um, I think a lot of times it's a lot of unnecessary stresses too. Like people, if they they actually sat back and realize, yeah, they'd be like, man, what, what I mean, I'm even, about? Even if you got an old car and you see this person with this new this new V8 car, that thing new sound car, nice. Man, yeah, you know, it, oh, that thing growling down the block. And, you know, it got all the buttons like a spaceship in that thing. Yeah. But you sitting here driving this car, you know, this 15-year-old car. But the thing that you don't understand is that this person could be barely surviving with this car. Yeah. And you, on the other hand, got a paid-off car that you don't have to worry about nobody coming back to take. I love not having a car note. Yeah, what I'm saying. (laughs) You know, and one of my friends... uh. You know, he got, you know, he go, he in part of this car club, right? Kells, shout out to Kells. He go to all these little car shows and <laughs> he went to this one, this guy had a Lambo. And he said that it was still people hating on this guy Lambo. I... Because it wasn't the fast model Lambo. Oh, so when you say, hey, you meant like they, they... Oh, yo, for real? Yeah. Instead of them just being, you know, happy for the guy having the Lambo. Yeah. Or, no matter what, you can just have appreciate him, man. You can have a Ford Focus for all I care. If it, you know, if, if it make you happy, I'm happy for you. It's a whole lot of haters out there. Yeah, you know, dude had, <laughs> so the guy had this car, and he said, the club is like a whole lot of hating men, because they just sit back and hate on everybody else's car. <laughs> You Are you know? really surprised, though? Yeah, you're right. I was, <laughs> I mean, I no, I guess I am surprised because I thought everybody would congratulate everybody. You would hope so, but I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of male ego in there. You it's know, a lot of male ego. You know, I don't think people realize that by them helping the next person, I only make it so much easier. You know, because even with the podcast game. 
it's a lot of podcasters out there who will not support you, but ask for your support. Ooh. It don't take nothing. Like, you don't have to listen to everybody's show. You know, you don't even have to share it, but you can, like, like it. Yeah, shout them out every yeah. day. Yeah, it don't take nothing to shout out some show. Yeah. You know, but that's why I think it's, like, people is taking a lot of stuff for granted. And they don't realize that, like, the next second something can happen, they could be gone. Yeah. And when you leave, how do you want people to remember you? That's a good point. You know, do you want them to say, oh, man, I I ain't really messed with him because he was nagging. Yeah, that dude always has some negative energy around. Yeah, you have, like, your funeral and only three people show up. But then I guess at the same time. Won't bother you because you wouldn't know. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you <know? laughs> see you at the crossroads. You know, or like, what kind of value are you adding to people around you? Oh, I like that. You know, are you you helping them believe in themselves? You know, are you letting them know that they can do certain stuff, or you just sit there and like downplay what they do and only hate on them and tell them they can't do nothing? You know, because you're frustrated with your life. Yeah, I think that's what it boils down to, man. A lot of people just, you know, whether, you know, what they, you know, they live a whole different life, you know, or what, you know, what they show people on Facebook, Twitter, IG. But a lot of times, like, that hate towards other people is really, you know, just inner hate or, you know, dissatisfaction with themselves. A lot of people just unhappy, you know, they wish they was, you know, somewhere else in life or they wish they was doing this. They, you know, they look back and wish they had taken this opportunity. So... Well, yeah, you got. I mean, you got a point. I mean, all I'm saying is that look around you and realize what you had, because the same stuff that you taking for granted, somebody else is praying to have it. Yeah. You know, and with material things and money, they come and go. It it come and go. It come and go quick. So I wouldn't value money and stuff like that. I mean, granted, you know, having money is nice. Real nice. Yeah, it's nice. But, you know, it can be stressful, too. Yeah. Because depending on how much money you get, some people want the money. Yeah. You know, they want to borrow the money. Or every time you go somewhere, they want you to pay for it because you got the money. Yeah. If I ever did get rich, man, I'm still like, like I'm... Still act the same. This shit ain't lying. If I were rich, I'd still wear my sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, that's all I got to say. You know, shout out to Tutu again, RIP. Yeah. But just get out there and enjoy life. You know, this, this is like an uplifting episode right here. Yeah. Cause Maybe you want to go back home now. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm this, this is a segue into the next, the next topic. You know, this is probably be a short episode right here, but we just wanted to get something out to y'all. Why do people question you when you grow mental and spiritually? What do you, what do you mean by question? Like, like, you know you're young. Yeah. You make some choices. You know, you have a couple of girls. You know, over here, a couple of girls uh, over yeah, there. I see where, you, see where you're leading to. You know, you blow money fast. Yeah. You know, you go to strip clubs and, you know, you're out there partying, having a good time every weekend. You know, stuff like that. And, you know, you out here just having fun. hmm But it becomes a point in time when you realize that life is so much more than just having fun and yeah. blowing money and the girls. But people don't want to accept that. They don't want to accept that you, you know, you growing up, you know, when you be like, nah, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit back with my old girl. Your partner be like, man, but I got these two, three over here. Wait, you be like, no, I'm a one, <laughs> I'm a one woman man. Black men don't cheat, by the way. Yeah, black men don't cheat. Like, uh, who the one woman man? Oh, uh, uh, I know exactly what you're talking about, too. Uh, David Hollister. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's like some people don't want to see you grow. Yeah. You know, they only want you to stay the same. 
as you did back when y'all was in high school and like college. You yeah. know, before you had kids and yeah. before you settled down and all this stuff. All right. You know, why do you think? Well, I think a lot of times it's because, you know, they still stuck in that lifestyle. It's like, man, like you, they, they look at it like, man, you done switched up on me, man. You, why like you acting different? A lot of times, it's, you know, it's hard for people to accept that. Because I know when I was down at Tyndall before, uh, in Panama City before Karina uh, moved down, it was the same thing. Like, guys, I used to go, you know, we used to go out to parties and club. Like, then Karina came down. I was like, nah, I got to I'll chill on all that. And it's the same thing, man. Like, oh, you done changed up, man. You, you got your girl. You, you acting different now. And so I think it's it's just difficult for people to accept because that's the you that, that they've gotten to know over the years or over, you know, however long you've known them. So it's just, you know, they look at it like, you know, they, they losing a friend or, you know, you, you know, it's just because it's not the lifestyle I think that they live in. You know, and another thing is that I see that you trying to make a person believe in themselves. Like, how far would you go? To make them believe in themselves. Like to push, you know, to like push somebody or motivate yeah, them. Like they like, you know, like they got potential. Like, but at the same time, you don't feel that they're using their potential to get far or where they you think they could be. Ooh. I mean, I think with that, it's, it, it all depends on the person. I mean, if you, if they just have it. Because I think it's different. If somebody has recognized that, that potential and they're work, you know, you can see that they they want it, then I'll continue to work with them. But if somebody, you know, somebody's just lazy, there's only so much you can do with them. So should you worry about their dreams more than they do? No, I don't think so. You know, that's what I was... Yeah, because I think, I think you get sidetracked on your own goals if you, you know, you're so focused on somebody else. I mean, if it's somebody that hasn't recognized that potential yet, you can, I'll definitely say, you know, work with them to help, you know, bring the best out of them. But if it's somebody that's just, you know, going to be lazy and, you know, they may have a talent, but if they don't have the drive and, you know, it's just, just seeming like a dead end, you know, I, would, I wouldn't waste all this good energy on that. Yeah, I learned that, you know, as life goes, you meet a lot of different people. Some people that you never thought you would be talking to. Yeah. You know, they, you know, you be places you never thought you would be. But the one thing is that if your old friends see you now, what they say, man, you still the crazy dude that I've been back then. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they'd be like, he just the same like you was back in the day. You know, is yeah. that a good thing? Uh-huh. But like, say you was a good guy back then. You know, they'd be like, "Man, you ain't changed one bit." You know, that's why I mess with you. I mean, you talking about if you just run into somebody at the store? I mean, personality wise, I think you you know you gonna you still gonna be who you are. But I mean, I th- think it takes more than that for them to you know then you know a quick talk at the grocery store to you know to know that you you know you just still still the same person. I think with that though, like going back to like your original question, I think you, as you grow though, I think you got to surround yourself with like-minded people. Oh, that's fat. Because I mean, if you still, you know, you know, you still hanging around them dudes that's going out to the club and messing with different girls, eventually that negative energy might catch up. Yeah, it might try to try to suck you back and you know temptation and all that stuff. So, but you got to sur- surround yourself with people that got the same goals you know not necessarily living the same lifestyle but you know people that got this you know like-minded people I, w- I would say so people who want something got i can't lie that's that's a big uh that's a big part of why i mess with who i mess with you know most of the people i mess with like you know they 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 go orient like they want something out of life yeah you know like we can't always see each other you know, because, you know, at the same time, everybody got, like, families and, you know, wives and... Right. But, you know, we still got the... You know, everybody got the same goal. We trying to have something. Mm-hmm. You know, you trying to build something. You know, you just don't have time to just kick it. 
every day like you know you used to when you were young. It'd be nice, but but then at the same time, if I know I'm surrounded by guys who are trying to have something, that only motivate me to have something All also. Right. All right. You know, you ain't finna hang around guys who got, you know, their own ha- homes and, you know, apartments and stuff, and you still staying at home with the parents. Yeah. You know, you're gonna be like, I gotta, you know, I gotta hook up with the squad, and, you know, I gotta get there. You see somebody who, you know, invest in, and, you know, you know them, and you know how they move, you know, you see them investing, and you see them starting their own stuff, and, all this stuff, you know, it's, that's only motivation to me. Yeah. So, you know, therefore, that's the, that's the why that's the why I'm the way I move. <laughs> nah, I, I definitely understand that. But, like, you, you just serve as a you know, probably something you don't you, you don't know is like people you know people are always looking at you, people are always observing. They always and so you all you know you just want to set a good example. You never know who looking up to you from a you know even if it's from a distance you know like maybe some of the young dudes you playing ball with you know they you know they see. You know, they see you with the kids. They see you, you know, got the business started. You know, and it's, you know, they might not, you know, say it to you directly, but, you know, you could be inspiring um, inspiring a lot of people, so. Now, this part, this is off the subject a little. But, th- this a, this going to be a topic. It's going to be a topic. All right. You know, we're going to go to the next topic. Watching what you put on social media. Oh man, I know you got a story for this one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it just ain't the the celebrities and the sports players who this pertain to. Mm-hmm. You know, because I don't think people realize how small the world is. So. You know, me, yes, uh, like I said before, all the other episodes, I own the business. But by me owning the business, I know that it comes with stipulations. Yeah. You know, I be thinking like the bigger picture. And with the bigger picture, I be thinking like, I never know where this can lead to. Like a person could start a YouTube channel today, and by next year, you know, you could be working with Nike. Or, you know, whatever, depending on what type, you know, in TV shows or whatever, however, you know, what kind of channel you start. But I got to tell people before these big name people, whoever trying to network and connect with you to build something, Mm -hmm. they go check your social media to see who they they dealing with. They do. You know, and today I went and uh, got my hair cut and I'm sitting back talking to my barber. And he's a real estate guy. So he was telling me, like, you know, I, he said, I go check the person real estate, you know, their social media to see what kind of person I'm dealing with, to see what type of angle I should go in and, you know, mess, you know, conversate with them with. Yeah. He was like, because if you go on there and you see this guy's about business, you know, like, okay, this guy's about business. But if you go on there, you see, yeah. like, him, like, drinking and, like, partying all the time. You know, like, oh, this guy probably sell, like, one house a year or something yeah. like that. Like, he ain't taking this too serious, right. you know, or or how, you know, they drama feel. So, that's why I tell people, is like, watch what you put on social media, you know, because you don't understand, like, the big, the big picture of you making these connections and networking and all that stuff like that. You know, because... It's always going to be new faces that these brands and companies and everybody would need, mm-hmm. you know. So don't ever sell yourself short. Just think that, oh man, you know it's a little, old, it's a little old cow. Yeah. You know why? Shoot, why Apple want to talk to me? Mm-hmm. No, you never know. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, it's all about you being smart with what you post. Yeah, I think a lot of times, man, people don't like you said. People don't think it's going to come back to affect them later on. I seen like at work. I mean, when we do like our hiring boards, like that's one of the first things they they take a look at. You know, they want to like you said they want to see what type of person they're dealing with. Is this person posting a lot of you know? Um, can't think of the word. So wait, right they now. look they look at your social media. Yeah. Oh, before they hire you. Yeah, before they even decide they're gonna give you an interview. 
like when you apply they you know they run through your name they they'll send out email or send out emails you know so hey, it's this, just not about referrals no more huh? yeah, yeah i mean that's that's one yeah it's like hey what can you tell me about this? they'll come up to people that know i'm like hey what can you tell me about this person what type of work is he what type of you know you know just pretty much anything you can tell them about the person both good and bad not it's you know not always bad but then you know, take a look at this, you know their social media to see you know what type of stuff are they posted are they st- you know inappropriate or you know stuff that's could be you know why can't i think of the word just like confrontational stuff drama field yeah exactly you know are they you know on, online bashing people just you know really just trying to see what per- type of person you're working with so that's that's i didn't know they did that good thing i don't really post on social media so yeah unless they talking about the eagles yeah you know they, you know yeah. that's a different story though <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> so your job really they did they check see I never thought about like I'm thinking like businesses who want to collaborate with you or you know have bring you in but I guess that would be kind of like a job yeah I guess I it's not even thought. just yeah even just like civilians like pretty much anybody like they yeah they, they do all of that man all them like back I'm gonna say like a full on background search but they de- they definitely do a little you know peeking in to see what type of person you are to see what you know just remember to see who they dealing with oh see now I didn't know like a, they can hold you back from getting a job yeah cause but they that, see this person as you know he like you said if he you know he all smoking drinking doing all this stuff you know it's you know if you got and you got this other guy you know it's I'll just say just make sure your social media reflects the type of person that you are like don't be out here trying to live a certain lifestyle or portray yourself as such to you know for likes because it could end up costing you in the end oh you are right you so right dang well yeah I don't think people realize how big a picture <laughs> social media play yeah, it's just somebody that ain't never met you before. That's all they got to go oh, on. So. <laughs> hey, you ever did research on somebody on social media? Yes, he yeah. has. Yeah, but I mean, looking, looking. I would, well, it wasn't research, but you know, I don't. Yeah, what? what yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't look. You know, it wasn't really no research, but <laughs> I don't know. I have. <laughs> I have. I had to see, like, how they moving. Yeah. You know, because everybody got social media. They do. So, you know, they let you know how they moving, you know, and 9 out of 10, they let you know what they think. You know, even though you don't have to tell the world what you think all the time, mm-hmm. you know, I sit back and I do pay attention to how people move on their social media. Yeah. I think it's, a lot of people, you know, they don't, I mean, I get it because a lot of people use it as you know their voice to the world but i definitely say as long i mean if it's that's who you are that's who you are but i just say just always make sure it reflects the person that you are so and plus it depends on what you're trying to do yeah now i'm not saying be watered down or nothing like that no be yourself even if that person even if it's you know yeah yeah be if, yourself. That, if that's who you are just i'll just say just Embrace make sure it, it reflects you yeah yeah, way per, you know people know what they're getting into, whether they like it or not. You know, if you're happy with yourself, that's all that matters. Exactly, that's all. But I'm just saying, like, but if depend on what you're trying to do, sometimes you should not always post certain stuff on social media. Yeah, yeah, certain st- every, everything ain't for the world. <laughs> yeah, everything is not for the world. <laughs> but at this time, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and your boys will be right back. Usually, this would be the commercial break where we would tell y'all to go check out X Squad Affiliates and the No Phony Podcast Networks, two amazing networks with some amazing shows. But at the same time, we would like to tell y'all to go check out other podcaster shows such as the Inside Scoop, Velvet Vibes, the Casey Show, uh, Mo Cheese Show, Politics with Dummies, and epod with friends it just some amazing shows out there and the podcasters who put their shows out put a lot of work into it to bring y'all entertainment and therefore we just here to share the love so if you can greatly help your boy out if you mess with us go mess with them 
and like every week probably you know chain up the shows of who who we shouting out so therefore let us go and get back to the conversation let's roll and we're back Off air conversation, back like we never left. <laughs> but uh, oh, oh, this this is a big one that I really want to get into. I told y'all it's gonna be a short episode. Breaking generational curses. Mm. What you feel about that? I'll give me an example. Of what you mean by that? It's like make sure I'm going in the right direction. It's like somebody. It's, let me see. Like, you know how your family got, you know, curses. Not cur- I guess it's not curses, but generational problems. Yeah. Like, your dad was on drugs. Your brother on drugs. Okay. Your, okay, mom, was, your mom was an alcoholic. Gotcha. Okay. You know, stuff like that. Or, like, we was poor growing up or, you know, my family always drama filled. Mm-hmm. And you know, it only take one person to change the whole outcome of your family. Yeah. You know, like, okay, my pops was a drunken on drugs. My brother went to jail. Me, my goal is to graduate college. Trying to break that tradition. Yeah, be the first in your family to, you know, go to, you know, graduate college. Yeah. Or, like, my family, we only worked at this factory. Like, but me, I don't want to work at a factory. Yeah, I want to open up my own. Dreams. Yeah, I want to open up my own business. Okay. You no, know, I want to be a business owner. You know, cursing like that. You said so. You was asking why is it so hard to 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 break those? Yeah. Um. I mean, I think being the first to do anything is difficult because a lot of times you don't. Like, I mean, if you are the first one, you don't really have somebody to go to to seek seek advice, especially, you know, from your, you know, your own family, like whether you like start the business or going to college or, you know, any, anything buying, your, you know, you want to be the first homeowner in your house, you know, or your, your family, like you don't really have that person, you know, that you consider family that you can go get that advice from. So I think that's one of the reasons why it's hard. Also, it's, you know, when you're trying to break a pattern, and that's all you've ever seen. It, it can be difficult. It's kind of it's like a that it, what, what is it called like that psychological man, I can't mentality or just like a, that hurdle that you get that you're trying to get over. It's like a, it's like a big roadblock because you it, that's all you've ever known. You've you know you've only ever known like this small city life. You know work. You know you move in a certain way. So it could it can be kind of difficult to. To maneuver, especially if you're the first one, you ain't got nobody. You know, you don't have nobody to look up to. You don't have nobody, you know, to seek that advice from. So, I can see why it could be, you know, difficult for her. depending on what you know, depending on what it is. I think that that makes a lot of sense. But like, I be seeing like a lot of posts. People be like, "My dad was a thug, so I'm a thug too." Yeah. You know, like not seeing the problem in that, but like. If you see where it leads your dad, why would you want to follow in those footsteps? I think sometimes keeping it real would be like the wrong way to be thinking. Yeah. Well, if that's all you ever known, you may not see nothing. I mean, it's it's a disease, man, because you may not see nothing wrong with that lifestyle. If that's all you, your family, your friends, everybody that you know is living that lifestyle, you may think... you. A lot of it is, could be ignorance too. Not like you know saying they're ignorant, but like just not knowing. Like you, you may think that's that's all there is to life. Is that that type of lifestyle? But you may be thinking. I mean, but for them to think like that, how many people got phones? Yeah. Like you can go anywhere in the world on this phone. You can go on Google Earth. So. Who fault do you think it would be that a person don't want to see more? Is that your family's fault that you don't want to see more? Or is that your fault that you want to be closed-minded? Um, I think it's a... 
I think it's a little bit of both. Because if that's, I'm not gonna lie. Like if you when you if you living in a small town, or we use back home for example. I mean, maybe not now, but like you know, you just want to like somewhere in the middle of Earl or something. You know, you might see all these places on you know on your phone, like, um, you know, like L.A. or you know these big cities. But when you like in the middle of nowhere in the country or something, it may seem like it's it may seem impossible to get there. And also, I mean, I think it's you know it could be it's, it's on you at the same time. But it's also on the community too. Like you can your communities can definitely you feel that, you know, those individuals too, I think. You know, it's but I think it's a lot of times, man, it's like you know, being in those small places, man, like that, that can seem like a whole like it just may seem impossible to get there. Or they may not know how to get there. It's like, man, I'm I'm you know, you you, you almost feel stuck. You almost like crabs in the bucket. Yeah, it's like you, you know, and a lot of times, like, like we was talking about earlier, like with the, you know, with the jealousy and stuff, people don't want to see you leave. People don't want to help you. They don't want to see you doing better than them or trying to better yourself. So, yeah, that's you know, true. That's a fact. So, yeah. so if you got that outlet, you know, it, it may just, you know, people around you, your circumstances can make it even tougher because, you know, ain't nobody going, man, what are you trying to better himself for? You know, I ain't about to. Oh, you think you think you yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. So, I think that's, that's a lot. That could be. You know, they can play a factor into it into it as well. So, damn, you hit the nail on the coffin. Right <laughs> I mean, that that's real. You know, I just I just look at it like we can see the world so much different nowadays. Now. Yeah, I mean, me growing up, like I remember this one time, <laughs> my uncle told me he stay in Compton. He said. Oh, yeah, you know, you could come down, you know, spend summer with me. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, snap, okay. You know, I ain't, I ain't never been to West Coast. I never yeah. been to, I'm like, Compton. I don't think I knew, I was young. I knew about Compton was... Friday. <laughs> no, nah, it was way before Friday came out. This was back when... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like you teenager or something. No, no, I don't know, like, probably like 9, 10. Oh, like, okay, okay. Yeah, and so... NWA. I told my, uh... <laughs> Cousin, I said, say, Uncle So and So said I could come to Cali out there with him. He said, Shoot, you better not go. I said, What? I said, Why not? He said, Shoot, you're going to get killed. <laughs> and so, the whole thing I knew about Cali was like NWA. NWA <laughs> yeah. <they ain't> banging. <laughs> so, I'm like, Oh, snap, everybody out there banging. I said, I'm going to go out there with the wrong color. I'm going to get down. Yeah. Like, and so I was so close-minded. I never did go. Dang. You know, just off of what he said. I'm like, oh, shoot. He must know what he's talking about. I said, no, nah, I better go and stay where I'm at. But then you was taking advice from somebody that had never been there, too. Dang, the right. first thing they did right. first, oh, I wouldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. somebody was like, hey, you want to come to California? They be, they be going. So You're right. He ain't never went. No, he, he ain't never. He, he, he taking advice from somebody that ain't never been there. You right. I don't know. For me, like that's that's one of the things that um I think helped me was because I used to come out. You know, I used to come out here to visit. You know, y'all during the summer, or I go out to D.C. to visit my other uncle. And I think that's that kind of opened my mind up because I'm like, and biggest. You know, I've seen like St. Louis and <laughs> Memphis and. Atlanta once or twice, but that was kind of it. That's I thought that was you know. I mean, I knew there was more out there, but I didn't know how to get to it. Well, that's strange because growing up where we was at in Arkansas, it used to be moving to Memphis. That was a big move. That was a big move. move. Be, and like back moving in to school, the city. person be like, "Oh yeah, I talked to somebody in Memphis. You I know <laughs> somebody in Memphis." Not know, you know, now I realize it's a 10 that minute drive. This is just like <laughs> yeah. five, ten minutes, like right across the bridge. Yeah, like, but it's, it's, it's just that mind. West Memphis, like, it's that closed it mind. Was just, it was just a part, like, oh, they stay in the big city, they stay in Memphis. Yeah. You know, but we was in West Memphis. But like, you look over, you see all the skyscrapers, you see, you see the people. You're closer to downtown than some people who stay in Memphis. Wow, you're right. You know, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you right <laughs> you know we only thinking like it's the big city you right you know so yeah and that that mentality is like everybody just wanted to move to Memphis 
or Atlanta. Like, yeah. this was before everybody wanted to go to Dallas and Texas. Yeah, everybody go to like, Dallas now. Everybody wanted to go to Atlanta or Memphis. Like, where well, you going to? Man, I'm to Atlanta. Yeah. You know, it makes it St. seem Louis like... St. Louis. Yeah, it makes it seem like it was, like, you know, the big thing to do. Yeah. You know, but, like, once I came to, like, Seattle, I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, I remember that's tell when I used to come over here, like, in middle school, like, most people didn't know where Seattle was. That's like well, you're going to Washington. People thinking Washington was Washington, D.C. You see the White House? I'm yeah. Like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's even bad because some people from Seattle used to ask the same wow. thing. Wow. I mean, you, like, I'm going yeah, to I don't know. I ain't got no excuse for that one. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I'm just thinking like the generational curses that it just take one person in order to change the whole outcome of a family. Yeah. You know, if you see your uncle, your auntie, or somebody else, like, they run the business, Mm -hmm. that let you know that, oh, this is possible. You know, like, I can do this, you know, I can can get advice from them, or, like, you got family members who moved out of state. Yeah. You know, you're talking like, oh, man, hey, what's New York like? Is it just what is, like, on TV? Like, yeah. Like, no, there's nothing like that. You know, you come out and visit so you can see. Yeah. You know, and be like, it opened your mind to be like, dang, I want to go to Paris. See what Paris is like. Yeah. You know, give me a croissant or something <laughs> like that. Like, I want some Italian food. I'm going to go to Italy. Like, I'm going to go to Italy, Italy. Yeah. You know, and I mean, me coming out here experiencing what I experienced and like that was the whole thing it's like when you came out here I was like damn I gotta show him yeah what it's like and I'm glad you did cause I'm like it was like every summer I'm like man can I stay I'm asking my mama like hey can <laughs> I, I move up yeah every yeah. summer you know and like, <laughs> that's why like I had you and Bray I'm like I gotta show them that like man it's more out here yeah you know like we going to the beach and we going downtown and Oh, this stuff and yeah, like this is the type of stuff we never experienced. I mean, the first time I like ever just hopped on a bus, like I'd never been on. Well, I mean, you know, outside of the school bus, they ain't got no buses to run through. Like at the time, I, I, yeah, I think they do now. Yeah, but like at the time, I'm like, I was so I was scared, but it was like it was some adventures and some I never did. I mean, I got lost. You know, I took the bus from Kent all the way to you know downtown Seattle. I had no clue where I was at. No you went phone. By yourself? Yeah, no phone, no nothing. And I'm just like. I mean, I knew how to, you know, you know, print out the, yeah. print out the route. For, <laughs> I ended up falling asleep on the bus and, yeah, I ended up downtown Seattle. I ended up just walking around for like an hour or two and just ended up down by Pike Place and like, I'm just like, man, it's cool. It's like, the you know, I'm just like, I just feel like a city guy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I felt, luckily I found my way back home. <laughs> I mean, I used to get lost. I used to That's get fun, lost. though. It's fun. I used to hop in, like, borrow my daddy car or whatever and just go get lost yeah you know that's how you find your way around yeah but it's like it's just like that little small thing right there can change so much within families yeah you know and people ask like well why is this family rich or why is this family so well off mm-hmm. it's because like you know well within the black community somebody in their family made a decision to try something else yeah and like you gotta get outside your comfort zone yeah you know you gotta be uncomfortable in order to make it where you think you should be I like that you know you you be talking to so many people who don't know nothing about you but their first impression is everything Mm -hmm. so you know that's, that's why I tell people like you just be the change for your family yeah you know it ain't gonna be easy. It probably will be hard. A lot of people ain't gonna understand what you're doing. A lot of people probably make fun of you or talk about you. You know, but the difference between you and them is that you doing it while they talking about it. Yeah. You know, rather it be you finishing college, like you don't have to start a business. Like you can have a good job that you like. You know, as long as you happy with it, that's all that matters. Yeah. So it could be like flipping burgers, like. It's still a job, and you know, put food on the table. It put food on the table, and food in your belly, and you know all the newest recipes coming out. It's free true. food that works, <laughs> you know. No and a person don't understand that the the knowledge that you gain it from flipping burgers mm-hmm. will only help you if you want to start your own restaurant. 
Yeah. You know, you'd be like, oh, so this is how we move in McDonald's, and it's efficient. You know, so you learn how to move and the best way to move, and at the same time, you could be getting in a position to buy the whole restaurant. People don't know. They just think you flipping burgers. Yeah. But you can always move move up. You be store manager. And you can say owning the store then. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, so they'll never downplay what you do. Even if you like a garbage man or flipping burgers or you a lawyer or man, it don't matter. Yeah. Whatever you do, just make sure you learn it from it. And help it apply to whatever you do next. Nice. But we must, keep, we must keep this show going. Now, this is a little off off the... This ain't like the other topics we've been doing. This topic right here is... For like... My people in the hood and celebrities and stuff. Mm-hmm. Why is it considered weak when you have security? Like... I think You're I, so real that people think like, oh, he must be weak. He got security. Why he got security if he's supposed to be this guy? Yeah. You know? I think that only applies to a certain amount of people. Like, depending on how you portray yourself. If you got this, you know, if your, your persona or what you portray to the world is like you this this hardcore thug, you know, or thug mentality or, you know, whatever, you know, hood mentality. I'm this big bad dude I don't need, you know, I'll knock you out, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you got three dudes surrounding you. I can see, I, I can see that. Hold on. So your question was, why is it considered weak? Yeah. I think just that because it's like you, you put on this persona that, you know. So like the game. Yeah. Like, we know game be getting into some stuff. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he would have security. I think that's smart, though. I mean, I know it's smart. Yeah. But yeah, why why is it considered a security? Yeah, why is it considered weak? I think just like like T.I., like T.I. has security. Yeah. You know, why is it considered weak when you have security? Like, ain't that a smart move? Yeah, smart. People don't always. I mean, you trying to make it home, yeah. And you know that out of all that, you got millions of fans. So but you know, made a whole lot of enemies too. Yeah, you got millions of fans, but at the same time, it's millions of people who don't like you. Even if they are fans, they see a chance to hit the leg. Yeah, yeah. you make some nice music, but I'm gonna need this chain. Though. <laughs> I like your music though, but not not even when they need the chain. Like you know, rappers get shot, but they don't get robbed. Yeah, you know. Well, I think that's that's that could go back to like you know your, your street men, not street men. I keep saying that you're. Um, but you're, it's not it's not even just rappers though. I mean, look at like Kanye. Kanye got security, and he's not no tough guy. But yeah, but he's still a people celebrity. People say though. he weak. Oh, you're right. You're yeah, right. but I think a celebrity people see. Cause I don't think he gonna get shot. At, so like, I think he's more he's more like more liable to get robbed though. So like his, gangster rappers. So they shouldn't have security. Yeah, because I mean, you rapping about this stuff, and you know, you made a whole lot of enemies over the time. Especially if you like, rap, you know, you get you, one of those gang related rappers too. Like you, you, especially you dissing people, you dissing neighborhoods, you dissing, you know, somebody from, you know, you or you talking about someone. So he from my city. That's my dude. You know, so they look at you. You know, now they trying to, you know, take aim at you. I guess that makes a lot of sense. As far as like why they looked at it as weak is because it's like. I mean, it's just what it is. I mean, you you portray yourself as you know this boss or whatever, you know, you know. You say you you can go in any hood, you know. You gotta you got you know you gotta pass in any hood, but you didn't say you was bringing your folks bodyguards with you. So <laughs> you right? <laughs> so. <laughs> they never said that. My 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 hood car good in any hood. <laughs> Dang, you right? You right? I guess you know. I don't. I don't really consider it weak. I just consider it a smart move. Oh, absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, everybody just want to make it back home. Yeah. You can have a disagreement with a person now, and like they want to shoot you over. Yeah. You know, rather than them talk it out. 
Like Ain't nobody the, trying to talk no more. You no, know, like the Nipsey Hussle situation. Yeah. Like, that didn't have to happen. You know, but it was just that day that the guy called him without his security and without his, you know, his people. Yeah. You know, so you right. It's definitely... Like, like, you right, okay, I guess... I guess I do see why people have security. Because everybody's trying to be famous these days. Like somebody, oh, I just punched Drake. Yeah. Uh, you know, like... A, yeah, you know, everybody trying to be famous. Like, oh, I just shot so-and-so. Yeah. You, you right. I got so-and-so chain with me. You yeah. Know, just... Everybody, yeah, everybody want that that fifteen minutes of fame, and they'll go through, they'll do whatever they, you know, whatever it takes to get it too. Guys and girls. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that even showed that if you're not talking about them, you know, they some people have to make up stories. Mm-hmm. You know, because like, who really care about these people' personal lives? Like, who they going with? Yeah. And stuff like that. Is people just want to make headlines? So. You know, who care if they went to Chick-fil-A? Like, who keeping up with these people that much that you really worry about they ever move? Well, it's the day and age that we're in now. It's like, even with, like, athletes, like, even, it's like, they kind of, like, criticize, like, even go, like, we'll talk, like, LeBron, for example. Like, every, you know, it's every time he had his kids game, they filming him. Like, you, you got to think, like, back in the day, like, what did you know about Michael Jordan off the court? Shoot, did he uh, gamble? If yeah, that was really it, that was like he played twenty. You know, he played almost two decades. That's the only narrative that came out, like outside the court, really. No, did he had three kids? Damn, yeah, narrative. That's, that's like oh, fact, though. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, he been married, but you, you know, they weren't filming Michael Jordan like everywhere he walked. You didn't see Michael Jordan at Burger King, like. Yeah, you're right. It was just a different story, but like, really, the only thing we knew is that he gambled and. That's kind of yeah. You know, it's kind of the, really the narrative of him off the court. Like you didn't, he wasn't in the news like every single day. You know, Michael Jordan driving to practice. Michael Jordan at the airport. Michael Jordan, you know, at the barber shop. The Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, you right. So I, I just think every what because everybody has a phone. Everybody has a camera now. Every every phone got a camera on it now. So if you can, if me filming so and so and get me, you know couple thousand likes you know everybody want to go viral everybody want they like I said that 15 minutes of fame whether they come at your expense or not <laughs> you're right you're right um wow I ain't thinking like that well yeah I guess you're right about that but uh I hate to say it people but we gotta get ready to wrap it up uh, it had to be a short episode, you know. I have to say thank you again, Boo, for filling in. He, you know, he came down here, you know, fresh off of waking up, <laughs> just to make sure that we have an episode. Oh, this anytime, week. man. You know, we appreciate that. I appreciate you for having me, man. You know, it's always a oh, good you know, time. It's all open doors, you know. Yeah, I mean, we we talk like this probably every week. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just gotta get we it just, recorded we just now. Record this time. <laughs> but uh, you know, we gonna we I think we are gonna have start having different different and more guests on you know certain stuff you know the business stuff is off and running so they give me time to focus on other stuff and you know that hey watch it because boo could be on next week we don't know yeah (laughs) so you know once again thank you boo for coming through appreciate you for having Uh, me what we always say is make sure you like you check out other people podcasts and Check out their shows because there's a lot of dope shows out there. You know, if you're yeah. listening to this and uh, you want to send shout outs to anybody that you haven't sent a shout out before the last eight times? Oh, uh, no, nobody do, man. Just same old Karina, Malik, Grandma. Yeah, it's, you know, same old, same. And uh, with that, I'm going to leave y'all with the inspirational quote S- Standing alone doesn't mean I am alone, it means that I am strong enough to handle things myself. Mm. And that's a fact, Jack. I don't even know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they usually rip out the rhyme at the end. Yeah. But as always, shout out to Jay who couldn't be here. You know, Sir. he gonna be. You know, he gonna be back. But the boy, he's still working on that music. And uh, don't forget to like Pops with Mops Cleaning Facebook page. And uh, we currently working on the website. You know, shout out to Al. 
And uh, as always, Cal and Jay, er, day, gone. You said that like you was a sick bird, right? Oh. Hey, we <laughs> yeah, that's why they got quiet. That's oh. what you gonna do? <laughs> oh, we gotta do that again. We gotta re, we gotta re-roll that one. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that in. You know, it's unedited. It's straight raw. <laughs> yeah, look at. Are right, you ready? All right. I'll follow your lead on this Cal one. Cal and Jay, er, day. day. Come on, man. I'm waiting on you. No way. I told you to do it. Oh, I got the first part. Cal and Jay, every day. Come on. You sound worse than I did. <laughs> From the bottom. <laughs>